Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is a chord of a circle? We'll talk about what chords are, and we'll go over a few of their interesting properties. So here is the beautiful circle we'll be working with, and here is the center of the circle. A chord of a circle is quite simply a line segment whose endpoints both lie on the circle. So here we have an example of a chord in blue. You can see that both endpoints of this segment lie on the circle. So this is a chord. Here is another chord that you might recognize. This is a chord that passes through the center of the circle. So this is a diameter of the circle. In a circle, a chord that passes through the center is the longest possible chord. And again, if a chord passes through the center, it's called a diameter. You might be familiar with diameters from the classic formula that the circumference of a circle is equal to pi times the diameter of the circle. Alright, now let's erase this chord and this word and this arrow. Now let me draw another chord of the circle, something like that. Remember that a chord is a line segment whose endpoints both lie on the circle. Now let's suppose that the length of this chord is the same as the length of this chord. I guess I should give them some names and write that down. So we'll write that A is congruent to B, so they have the same length. When two chords have the same length, there are some interesting properties, one of which is that these two chords are equidistant from the center of the circle. So since the distance from the center of the circle to both of these chords is equal, these two green line segments have to be congruent. I'll put one little hash mark on each line segment to indicate that they are congruent. Another interesting thing is that since the chords are congruent, these minor arcs that they cut are also congruent. So the length of this arc is the same as the length of that arc. And the same goes for their major arcs. The chord A cuts this major arc, and the chord B cuts this major arc. Of course, they overlap quite a bit, but those arcs are congruent. So here's another interesting property. What I'm doing now is drawing a radii from the center of the circle to each endpoint of the chord. Now if we look at the two radii that are connected to the endpoints of this chord, between those two radii is this central angle. And then with these two radii that are connected to this chord, we see that between them there is this central angle. Then, because these two chords are congruent, we know that these two angles are also congruent. So, I could put a hash mark there to indicate that those two angles are congruent. And then we could also conclude by a number of triangle congruence postulates that these two triangles are congruent. So you can see there's a lot of beautiful symmetry and congruence going on here when we have two congruent chords. Also, most of these statements go both ways. So not only can we conclude congruent angles from congruent chords, but we can also conclude congruent chords from congruent angles, and that is a heck of a tongue twister. As with most things in math, we could go on and on talking about interesting properties of chords, but I'll leave you with a little bit of a challenge. Something you might want to know is the length of a chord. So how do you figure that out? Well, I'm not going to tell you in this video. I'll do another video on it later, but I will give you a hint, and I bet you can figure it out on your own. All you've got to know is the measure of this central angle and the length of the radius of the circle. So let's say that this central angle has a measure of theta. And let's say that the length of the radius is r. Now notice that this segment that goes from the center of the circle to the chord splits this triangle into two right triangles. Then, since they're both right triangles, we can conclude that they're congruent by the hypotenuse leg postulate, because we know that their hypotenuses are congruent because they're both radii of the same circle, and they have this leg in common. So they are congruent by the hypotenuse leg postulate. Now notice that this bigger triangle is an isosceles triangle, because it has these two congruent sides. Thus, we know that these two angles of the triangle are congruent, because those are the angles opposite the congruent sides. 
Then, since these two little right triangles are congruent, we already know that this angle is congruent to this angle, and we just show that this angle is congruent to this angle, which means that this angle is congruent to this angle. So since this purple angle has a measure of theta, and these two smaller blue angles are equal, and they add up to theta, we know that both of these smaller blue angles have to be equal to theta over 2 because again, they have to be equal and they have to add up to theta. So then if you know theta, the measure of this purple angle, and you know the measure of the radius of the circle, then you can use a specific trigonometric ratio to find the length of this segment here. Then keeping in mind that these right triangles are congruent, if you know the length of this segment, you'll be able to find the length of this whole chord. Just for an example problem, let me tell you that theta is 50 degrees and the length of the radius r is equal to 6 centimeters. Try to find the length of this chord. Let me know how it goes down in the comments. So I hope this video helped you understand what chords are and some interesting properties they have. One more time, a chord of a circle is a line segment whose endpoints both lie on the circle. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.